How is the space jockey linked to the aliens? And what is the true meaning of the signal from LV-426? The alien movies gave us very little information on what the connection is. We all assumed that the space jockey was impregnated by an alien, but what else happened? During the movie Alien in 1979, the ship called the Nostromo was originally an interstellar cruiser, but was later refitted to act as a commercial towing vehicle. During a routine mission from the planet Thetis, which was rich in natural resources, the team was on their way back to Earth until they picked up an unknown signal coming from LV-426. But unknown to the crew, Whaley Nutani already knew about the signal, so they selected the Nostromo to intercept and investigate. During the mission on LV-426, they uncovered a derelict spacecraft. Within the alien vessel, they found what looked like an alien pilot. The damage from its chest was never fully revealed in the movie. It was only speculated that something burst from within the body. They later find an alien life form and it gets brought back to the Nostromo. But there were some key events that were not mentioned in the movie. During the comic book story Aliens Earth War, which was also called Aliens The Female War, it expanded on a story that took place after the movie Aliens. Ripley is called by the Whaley Newtani Corporation to once again fight the aliens, and this time act as a guide. When the lives of Newt and Corporal Hicks are threatened, she has no choice but to accept the mission, meanwhile leaving Newt behind. The comic book reveals that Whaley Newtani already knew about the signal from LV-426. Not only were they interested in the alien life form, but they also realized the pilot represented sentient life capable of navigation and construction. Kane's helmet recorded everything that was found, even the alien life form that was brought on board the ship. Ash was the science officer on board the Nostromo. Although he was an android, he was programmed with the company's best intentions in mind. All the Nostromo's information was then dumped into the escape pod. Ash was only following orders from the company. Special Order 937 was then implemented. Priority 1 ensure return of organism for analysis. All other considerations secondary. Crew expendable. In the comic book story, Ripley would then be teaming up with another group of marines, and they are sent back to LV-426. Willie Nutani wants two things, a live xenomorph specimen and possibly transferable navigational data from the derelict spacecraft. When a marine trips a power surge from within, Ripley picks up some type of electromagnetic synthesis. Now, this was not a normal energy source, it was an intuitive living force that made its way into the APC systems. It later learned a new language to communicate with Ripley, and it showed her fragments of what the space jockey saw. Its memories were then sent through the Marines' communication lines. What she learned was far beyond what they already knew. She could now understand the full signal coming from LV-426. Then I saw her. I felt her strength her utter supremacy. For the longest time, humans believed the xenomorph would infest a planet or area just out of sheer convenience, but we were so wrong, they actually moved with the purpose. The pilot of the derelict had discovered the alien's genesis, the source of their power. The alien, Queen Mother, is calling her children back to her. Some xenomorphs had survived the explosion that occurred at the end of Aliens. Then later on, they would find the derelict spaceship. This is when they start attacking marines. Ripley is unable to decipher the signal that was picked up. It was not really a warning, but in fact, they intercepted a message not intended for us. It was full of trajectories, starfields, and a map to the Queen Mother. It was her desire to be reunited with her children. The story picks up ten years later. Ripley explains to the others about the true meaning of that signal. It originated from a planet that first spawned the alien, the xenomorph homeworld. The creatures were never meant to be apart, but as their numbers ended up on different worlds, the Queen Mother calls out to them to be whole again. Around this time, Earth is still being overrun by aliens. Because the xenomorphs are scattered across Earth, they cannot be rounded up. So their plan is to bring the Queen Mother to Earth. She would gather her children in one location, making it easier to detonate a bomb in a central location, thus wiping them out. Since they cannot track down every xenomorph on Earth, this is the best option to save the planet. The story then brings back Newt and Hicks who are joined by Ripley. They arrive on the alien homeworld and start exploring. 
It's not long until the team comes across some giant pods. It looks like a giant egg. They seem organic, and also, they ooze this translucent discharge. And what is inside is something new. A massive alien, larger and stronger than the others. These are the royal guards of the Queen Mother. They rip apart the power loaders that are made of alloyed steel. And Ripley says these special aliens are her chosen few, trying to protect the Queen Mother. So later in the story, Ripley does capture the alien Queen Mother by the use of a power loader, and they plan to use her to gather and then destroy the aliens on Earth. But the plan ends up changing when a little girl named Amy has to be rescued. Ripley and Newt leave the APC and search for Amy. Moments later, Amy is found and Newt takes her back. But Ripley is not done. She has to face her fears to end the nightmare. So she confronts the alien Queen Mother and shoots her multiple times. While these events are happening, we later learn that a derelict ship was sending out an energy surge towards Earth. This caused temperatures to change globally. These are early signs of a terraforming process. The ending speculates that all of this was a way to use humans to eradicate the xenomorphs on Earth. And then the species aboard the derelict would terraform it for their own use. The space jockey pilot from this ship was from the first story, Aliens Earth Hive. So that covers the origins of the signal from LV-426 and also what happened after Aliens. This was part of the Aliens trilogy which started out in the novels and it was also supposed to be a continuation of the Aliens movie but later on when Alien 3 came out the later versions of this story had Newt and Hicks changed to different characters so there's more than one version of this story but with minor differences. Although it was not mentioned in the comic books, the novel does mention something about Ripley in this story. It is not the real Ellen Ripley. This one is actually a synthetic copy of the original. Now if you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching. My name is Carlos or Acid Glow, and I'll see you in the next video.